But I don't know how far we got after that. I think maybe on the top of 15, probably, where it says uh, Parmenides 7, through there, possibly, I'm not sure. What number? Was it? What I think on the, uh, where it says uh, 15, where it says Parmenides, and it's uh, 134a, I think. 134a. Yeah, somewhere around there, I think. I wasn't too awesome, so I'm not positive. Well, that was the uh, master argument, wasn't it? Yeah, where did we go after that? Mm -hmm. But we're at one thirty five C. One thirty five C, okay. Right after the master argument, Socrates stuck. Mm -hmm. Right, Don? Yeah. Where Parmenides picks up. Uh, what then will you do in relation to philosophy? In what way? That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. In what way will you turn your mind? Right. Remember the conclusion that we reached, following what is called the master argument. There are two levels. <clears throat> they are such that there is a kind of knowledge here. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of knowledge here. Mm -hmm. But the kind of knowledge on the higher level is of the nature of ultimate reality. Therefore, it does not share anything with our kind of knowledge. Therefore, there is a gap between these two realms. And since you can't, with your kind of knowledge, gain an insight into this level, equally well, the kind of knowledge that is here cannot, cannot understand this level, yeah. our everyday world so that the gods may have their mode of being, their kind of knowledge, their kind of perception. But ours is so different from it that we're on a different and distinct level and there's no participation between these levels. That's called the master argument. So when Socrates lands there, and Parmenides says, hey, what are we gonna, if this is true, what are we gonna do with philosophy? But philosophy assumes you can make that transition, yeah. that there is some way to go from here to here. Mm -hmm. 
But in this argument, there is no suggestion or way of approaching that problem of how do you go from the physical or the everyday world into the realm of reality, right? Mm -hmm. Good? Agree? Yes. Let's see. She's thinking. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I was thinking, I'm sorry. That's okay. I was looking for an agreement, so of course I looked to you. What were you agreeing about? <laughs> Would you agree when Socrates reaches the, the, the consequences of this position called the master argument, he's stuck? Yes. And therefore, Parmenides can say, okay, now what are we going to do with philosophy? Yes. And that's where we're taking off. Okay, yes. Now, we need another reader. Uh, are you interested? Sure. I can. Okay. Uh, Back and forth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh. <coughs> I'm going to start it over again. Yes, please. What then will you do in relation to philosophy? In what way will you turn your mind if you are ignorant of these particulars? Particular ideas. Now, in this mm -hmm. realm, there are said to be divine ideas, right? beauty, truth, mm -hmm. justice, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, it's a fair question, is it not? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In what way will you turn your mind if you're ignorant of these ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Socrates. Mm -hmm. 135C. Mm -hmm. Oh, at the present time I do indeed appear not to see in what way at all. That's because Socrates are <laughs> young. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That is because you exercise yourself too early mm -hmm. in this manner, O oh Socrates. You should endeavor beforehand to define what is beautiful and just and good. And okay, eat. so look here. He's saying, you know what? You're too young, you haven't done this. You haven't tried to define these mm -hmm. in terms of ultimate reality. Mm -hmm. That's your problem, kid. You're too young, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, and each one of these ideas, for I also just recently mentally noted this while hearing your discoursing with Aristotle here. Thus, on the one hand, that impulse by which you are impelled towards discourse uh, is logos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> is beautiful and divine. You may be sure of that. But on the other hand, you must collect yourself together by exercising more in that way, mm -hmm. which appears to be useless to the multitude, and is called by then by them empty talk, while you are still young. For you do not, uh, for if you do not, the truth will utterly elude you. Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of exercise is he going to propose? Go ahead. Collecting, Collecting himself yeah. together. Pardon me? Collecting himself together? Read. Yeah, do it. Oh, good. I, read it? Uh, yeah, read it. Go oh, okay, Sock. What then, O Permenides, in this manner of exercise? Is this the manner of exercise? Is this manner of exercise? <clears throat> that way is just that which you heard Zeno uh, practicing. <clears throat> Except that I was also quite pleased with what you said to him because you would not allow him to look upon the wandering that exists among the objects of sight nor upon the wandering that exists in relation to them but to consider accordingly to that which one can grasp especially by logos and in this way one would thus be to see the ideas. Or thus be led to see the ideas, I'm sorry. 
Mm -hmm. For it appears to me that in this way it may indeed be shown without difficulty that the beings experience both like and unlike, and anything else that exists. Quite right, indeed. But it is also necessary that okay. we... Now look here. There are four positions we have to nail down, okay? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the heart of where we're going. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, but it is also necessary that besides this, you should still also suppose the following, to consider not only the consequences resulting from the hypothesis, uh, whether each ideal self being hypothesized exists, but also the consequences resulting self does not exist. Mm -hmm. If you wish to be more exercised in this way. Yeah. In, in what way do you mean? Yeah, what, what, what kind of way are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Such as... Okay, a couple of things in here, all right, mm -hmm. that are very important for us. Um, in our translation, other translations <coughs> do not have it, but for these words, Now, according to that paragraph, he's using a very interesting language. Mm -hmm. He's attaching to each of these the idea of self. Mm -hmm. So it's self-beauty, self-truth, self-justice, self-logos, self-one, or one-self. And he's saying, hey, why do we do that? Why do we do that? Why do we attach the idea of self to these ideas? Hmm. And not only that, uh, if all of these ideas exist in reality, how do they exist in reality? Hmm. And equally, well, you have to deal with the consequences that would follow if you're wrong and that this is not true. You have to deal with all the consequences that follow there too. You need at least two levels. Well, okay, all right, how? Mm -hmm. That means what method are we going to use to answer that? Mm -hmm. Right, what method? What exercise? Mm -hmm. Now we go, now we go, here we go. <laughs> hey, Regina. <coughs> All right. Hello. Such as? Oh. The bottom. Uh, oh, okay, got it. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, such as, if you should wish to exercise yourself in this same hypothesis, which Zeno hypothesized, one, that if many exist, what must result both to the many selves in relation to the selves and in relation to the one? And again, if many exist, what must result for the one in relation to the self and in relation to the many? And in turn, if many do not exist, to consider in turn what will result both in relation to the one and to the many, both in relation to the selves and in relation to each other. Okay. Hmm. Stay there. Now, you have to visualize what he's saying. Okay, take a minute out, do it, come on. 
take a look at it. Okay, look here. You have to follow his kind of logic, and <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> it's essential that you understand that this word beings is another word for all of those ideas. Right? That's also called, this realm is also called being. It's also called, in Plato, the idea of the good, plural. They are not concepts. They are not concepts. This word, idea, is a Greek word, and it means in English, to behold. So it's a bad translation when they use the word idea, since idea means to behold. So to behold the good, that's what this experience would be like. You would have one experience where all of these things are simultaneously present, yet you can distinguish them insofar as they are present in that experience. Right? So he starts with, hey, if all of these things exist, if, right, if they exist, then what are the consequences on say, uh, is it possible that uh, you have a self? I would say so, yeah. You think so? I do think so. Oh, is it the same or different than his? I think it's different. Oh. Well, how did you discover they were different? Did you get to know him and see that his self is different than yours? I didn't get to know him, but I met him as separate from myself. Would you mind telling me where you see this flicker? Are these two things separate from one another? Yes. Good. And you can describe the difference, can't you? Yes. Go ahead, do it with yourself. Myself? Yeah, since you said you're, they're separate that the self as in our physical beings because we have physical differences that I can describe. Yeah, how does that help? Doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, if you're stuck, call on help, which is why we always call on Joey Hogarth. Oh, boy. Okay, one thing I would say that I okay. might help me with that myself, I'm younger. Pardon me. I... Pardon me, is yourself younger? I think so. In, in, so. my, in my only experience, he, he thinks so. Shouldn't he know? 
Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, Paul. Um, well, can I ask a question? What's your favorite food? Indian food. What's your favorite food? Americanized Mexican. <laughs> 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 hey, Rucker. Let's assume for the moment these are solids. All right? Let's assume they, they each have one. Notice his argument in number one. If many beings exist, what follows for selves? Like, if this is true, what follows for selves? And now he adds, he adds something great. You see, he says, uh, uh, selves in relation to selves. Not true, really, okay? So that means you have to know selves in relation to each other. Mm -hmm. Sir? Uh, the, only, the only problem I have with the thing that, well, we're going back to the tad, but the beings, beauty, truth, justice, is not actually in the Greek. There's no on or whatever. Yeah. It's just men. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just... Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. Yes, no, 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 no. See, but one of the problems here is the point you're raising. Hold on to it, all right? Um, it, if many, it just says, if many exist, right? So, mm -hmm. now, if he's picking up uh, Zeno's position in, the, in his first treatise, He's picking that up, and that's why we're sticking in beings. Because she says in the beginning, if, if beings exist. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, no, it's a good point. Look here. Watch this way. Do it both ways, you see. Never reject, it, never reject a, a, an answer, right? Mm -hmm. What follows both if many, now these are the many, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it might be, there are many other things in this world uh, These are things that exist in our world. Mm -hmm. Right? Trees, mountains, people, ice cream. <laughs> right? So, if many exist, what are the consequences for themselves and in relation to themselves? You can take it on both levels. When you see a possibility, don't reject it, add to it. All right? Now, this is the first part of his first question, of well, his first exercise. Notice, okay, let's go for this, the second part. <coughs> and then, <coughs> and, and again, in and turn. In, and in relation to the one. Right? Oh my gosh. So, uh, I just want to finish this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pick it up from there. And again, in turn, uh, to one should hypothesize if likeness exists. No, no. Uh, stay no, on the, the, the in the relation to the one. And again, if many exist, oh, what must result? Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. If many exist, uh, if many do not exist, to consider in turn what will result uh, both in relation to one. Mm -hmm. 136, 136A. One, oh, 136A. 136A. Oh, we're down there. 
Okay. Are you with us? Good? No. Okay. Where are we? At the um Okay, page in two bomb, okay. Uh let's see. Right where Parmenides uh, starts. Oh, here we are. Let's yeah. see. I'm sorry guys. What uh what must result both to the many selves in relation to the selves and in relation to the one? And again, if many beings exist, what must result for the one in relation to the self, and in relation to the many? And in turn, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Keep going. Uh, I think we have to read that uh, um, yeah. first possibility. That if the many exist, what must result both to the many, the many selves in relation to selves, one, and in relation to the one, two goals. And again, next category. Again, he's repeating. If many, what must result for the one in relation to self and in relation to the many, and in turn, Right? Mm -hmm. if you take the, the opposite, the negative case. Okay, look here, I just want to show a couple of things. <coughs> you see, um, this doesn't make any sense. Huh? Or there's a lot missing. It doesn't make any sense. Watch. If you can reason if many exist on either of these two levels. Why should it follow that it, had, that it has any consequence on selves? Or hockey? Or baseball? Let me do it again. Why would it follow that if you're asking the question, if many, exists, and we're going to use this example, trees, right, mountains, moon, apples, right, etc. If that exists, then why should we have to deal with the question, uh, how does that relate to selves? Mm -hmm. I mean, does ice cream have a self? Do mountains have selves? The moon? Oh, maybe he means up here. Because here he links the idea of self to these words. Oh, if that's the case, why would it, same thing now, why would it follow if we're reasoning for, uh, there's a certain exercise we have to learn, and the first thing we have to do is to assume that if many exist, we're up here now then what are the consequences on selves? Oh, these are all selves in here. Oh. Huh. But then he's asking, then you must also ask, what's the relation that's going on here? Now we go to the next word. And to the one. So after you do all of that, then you have to say, how are these things that are called selves relate to the one? Mm -hmm. right, that's the first part. Right, see what we have to do to make sense of it? Why didn't he? Mm -hmm. Didn't have a word of Okay, we're going to ask that question all the time. Why didn't he make it so clear that we can follow it very easily? Why does he represent it in such stark, simple terms that gives us a puzzle what he's doing, how to do it, or what he means? Mm -hmm. So let's look at the next one. Okay, look here. It's going to get worse, so. <laughs> All right, sir. It would, however, <laughs> make sense to a person who's reading auto as itself or yeah. themselves. That's right. Then it looks transparent. That's now right. you have only two things, the, yep. the many selves and the one. That's What's right. the relationship you know, to uh, 
uh, amongst themselves and to the other thing, and the other thing amongst itself and back. It's clean. Yeah. So uh, is it possible that Plato wrote this either meaning that or he wrote it to look like it was that when it was really... And then most people would be content with that. Let's just take the simple way out. It just reads itself. Well, most people don't examine clean. anything, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, but go ahead. I yeah. guess what I'm trying to drive at is uh, that if we put in the word itself instead of self, then it, then uh, now all of a sudden it makes sense. That's right. It makes perfect sense. That's right. And it's simpler. And therefore, it's rather foolish for him to write this way. It's either foolish for him to write this way, or <laughs> he's doing a play on the word self that they themselves, in his time, would have gotten. Uh, that would have missed the many would have the many would have missed it. Why would they have missed it? If 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 a Hellene, if a Greek at that time read it as itself, then they would have missed the more esoteric meaning. Uh, they would have gone for the easy route. Yeah, no. but then we will have to explain why didn't he use that Greek word, which which is uh, auto with epsilon in front of it. Hey, auto, right, right, right. Yeah, it's a problem. It's well, well, we can, I'll blame it on uh, the age of the text. They dropped out the epsilon. No, I, I, I myself sometimes wondered if alto without the epsilon <laughs> still means a alto. Okay, I don't mind. As long as you hold on to it and deal with the implications of it, <coughs> you can play it. Okay, all right, try this now on the next one, watch. Um. Go ahead. Okay. Two. Do you see the number two? Here we go. Mm -hmm. One should hypothesize if likeness exists or if it does not exist. What will result for each of the hypotheses, both to the selves that are being hypothesized and to the others? Uh, both in relation to the selves and to each other. Okay, mm -hmm. same thing. Structure it out. Mm -hmm. So in this case, selves refers to likeness self or unlikeness self. Yeah, yeah, that's quite true. Um, now, this, this is really curious, is it not? Let's do it right. Um, so, why do, why do people use this word? It's not necessary. Why not, if life, if, if there is such a thing as likeness, or it does not, uh, why, what is the force that exists in the sense? Okay, let's leave it for a moment. I, I must exist. I wonder what kind of existence in the sense, but I'll leave that alone. Uh, notice what we have to do. We must relate it both to the selves that are being hypothesized, right? By the way, we haven't hypothesized selves up to this point, have we? Mm, uh, unless likeness is the self yeah, being referred yeah. to, in which case uh, we have. Okay. Yeah, right. um, I, I'd almost see that as like and to <coughs> others, And to others and in relation to selves to each other, right?
Now, we're using this to say selves. Right? There's something, right? Okay. Um, let's see now whether we've captured it. Could you read the blog, please? Two. If many do not exist, no, no. Um, Two. and again in turn, one should hypothesize if likeness exists or if it does not exist. But the result for each of the two hypotheses. Mm -hmm. Each of the two hypotheses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both to the selves yeah. that are being hypothesized. When? Both to each of these hypotheses? How are you reading it? Well, there are two. Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. If likeness <coughs> exists or it does not exist, those yeah. are the two hypotheses. Yeah, okay. And you uh, apply those. Oh, hold it. Uh, you're going to apply that to each of the hypotheses. Go ahead. And then apply each of those to the hypotheses, both to the selves, both to the selves that are being hypothesized, and to the others. And to the others, go ahead. Both in relation to selves and in relation to each other. Right. 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 Now, why would an exploration of whether or not likeness exists or not have anything to do with selves? Or to the others? And how does that relate to selves and in respect to each other? Unless selves refers to likeness again. Well, what we need to do is add things to it to make sense of it. That's good. Or it's <laughs> perfect, or it's perfect the way it is, and we're not getting it. <laughs> That's our challenge. So let's see if we can save it. Go ahead. Number three. No, no. Stay on two. Do it again. Oh. And again, in turn, one should hypothesize if likeness exists or if it does not exist, what will result for the two hypotheses that it exists or does not exist, both applied to the cells that are being hypothesized about, and to the others, right. both in relation to cells and, to each and other. in relation to each other. No, 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 no. <coughs> No, look here. Um, would you agree we should expect that there should be con some connection between these ideas? That is, there should be some connection between likenesses to exist or not exist and applying it to the selves that are being hypothesized. Now, uh, these selves are being hypothesized and to others, and then we have to see its effect on selves, plural, and to each other of the selves we've, had, we've described. Now, uh, let me just ask you this simple question, okay? Why would a dis discussion on the nature of likeness Uh, ever be applied to the selves uh, and to others, uh, both to selves uh, uh, and to uh, each other. Like, look here, why would discussion on the, na on the nature of likeness ever be applied to the idea of selves and to others, and then talking about the nature of selves and to just point out the consequences on each other? Yeah, it's clear, though, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, 
you know, if I rearrange the words a little bit, it seems like it's more about the self being applied to likeness rather than likeness being applied to self. Yeah, we have to rewrite it in order to make sense of it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now you're saying. Right? If you don't interpret, it doesn't make any sense. It's going to get worse. Third. Oh, right? the third. Yeah, there's four of them. Okay. Ooh. And? So? And the same logos. Oh, the same logos. Not the self logos. Okay. The same logos must also be applied to the unlike. Wait, the, the self logos must. Do it again. Um, yeah. I think I think it's saying that. No, no, just read oh. it. <laughs> self logos must also be applied to no, no, the unlike. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the author asked you to make a choice between these two. Mm. And if you looked at it, it looked like the word same would be appropriate. Is that not true? The same logos? The same logos. See? Well, I would say the same logos applied to unlike must also be applied to motion and rest. What is that? What is at stake given the question I just raised? Well, what's at stake is I don't understand that the the way it's written. Thank you. <laughs> but that shows you're reading well. Don't lose what you're seeing. Okay. Look here, go back to my question, all right? What difference does it make if you use the word self or same in those first opening words in argument three? The Excuse implication me. is if it's the same logos, that means the logos must have been going through all of these prior, prior arguments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's self-logos, you have to then explain why the idea of logos deserves the title self. Mm -hmm. Keep both possibilities. Okay, keep reading, Joe. Come on. To generation, did you want to say something? Okay, we've got a whole bunch of things. What are they? Come on. Generation and the solution, and to the existence and the, to the non existence of self, and in what logos? Con concerning that which should be hypothesized as always being and as not being. Hey, um, maybe we have a different church. Yeah. Um, The same logos must also be applied to unlike, to motion, to rest, to generation, to dissolution. Right? Got all of those? Oh, I see. How many? One, Come on. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Come on. I want to know exactly. Seven. Seven. Go ahead. Unlike motion, yeah. Now read it from the beginning. Do it again. And the self logos must also be applied to the unlike. Look here. You're going to apply this idea of the logos. The same logos. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to apply it to each of these ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay? Keep going. Yeah. To the unlike motion and rest, generation and dissolution, and to the existence. And, and to self. That not. is, and the self that is not, right? You're going to apply that to? To the self logos is going to be applied to all those. No, to self, no, read it then, please. The self logos will be applied to all of those. You didn't finish it there and you misunderstood. And to the existence and to the non-existence of self. That's right. Oh, the same logos should be applied. Look here. 
you're being asked to use a certain thing called logos and you're going to apply it to these categories and when you finish with that, what do you have to do, Julie? Then apply it to the non-existence of to, self? To self, to existence or non-existence. Right, right. Right? Yeah. Okay, look here. Okay, <coughs> look here. I want you to do something for me. Okay. Um, Hey, you've all been paid a great deal of money, see? <laughs> and you're interviewers, and you've got this question in mind, and you're going to stop people along the road um, where you meet them and invite them to dinner. You've got the money. It'll all be funded, and you're going to pop this question to them. What effect do you think it will have? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, might they say, um, what are you talking about? Yeah. What do you mean by applying the same logos to these ideas and then mm -hmm. apply it to whether or not the self exists or does not exist? Mm -hmm. Why would you have trouble with that? Yeah, it would, uh, it would uh, do some great things to make them think of that. that. That would be very unusual and weird for them to think like that. Would they walk out of dinner? Oh, probably. Give up their dinner? Oh, probably. It'd be cheap then. And they would probably but, look at me like I'm nuts. Right. Mm -hmm. Because this is nuts. Right. Is that right? Well, Doesn't make any sense. Agree? Well, there are some things I can't imagine having a self, but some things I can't imagine not having a self. Pardon me? There are some things that I can imagine, like, that must have a self, and then there are some things that seem like they cannot have a self. Your example of ice cream and mountains, I can't imagine having selves. Why? And so to oh, add the self... Pardon, Would you just tell us why you're sure it doesn't have a self? <laughs> I can never see it. Up to, you can't see yourself, can you? I, I look at myself... Do you look at yourself, or do you look at an image? Well, into. I can, I can, I can observe my actions over time. Yeah, but why, do you, why do you say on that basis you have a self? Since all you're looking at is an image. Well, because my actions must come from somewhere. But then you don't know where it comes from, so you call that the self? Yeah, yes, I do call it. <laughs> Drake, what do you think of that kind of reason? I'd say I'd go to the same place. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, we have to change this in order to give it meaning. Mm. And every time you do that, you're cutting your own throat mm -hmm. or mind. Mm -hmm. mm. Because, hey, it really does make sense. Yeah. But you don't see it. And you're not going to see it for a heck of a long time in this dialogue. Mm. Well, then it can't be same logos. It has to be self. In well, whatever logos means, it must assume it's operating on all those prior arguments, the other two. Well, but that, you had said that would be the case if we we're going to translate auto as same in this case. Okay, then we take that out, put self in. If well, you know, I, I'm only asking for consistency because I had argued against, you know, just facetiously a little bit, but I mean, you know, it, it does look cleaner if you make auto be the same instead of self. No. And so we said, let's throw that out, at least for now, and just see how it plays. Reading it exactly, just in the Greek, auto is self. But now we get to this part, and we got a choice between same and self, and it, isn't, it doesn't have the epsilon in front of it. It's just auto, not a auto. If we're going to stay consistent and, and, and call that reading and not interpreting, it's got to be self, not same. Well, in the dictionary, they have hoautos as the same and autos itself as self. So you can argue that it can be the same. Well, there's no article in front of the autos, so therefore you can't it is. say it's there the same. There is an article. Is it the? Oh, yeah, hoatos. Oh, it means what? The. The. Yeah. So if you want to call it the same, it means the same, same period. It, if it has an article in front of right. it, yes. But, hmm, wait okay. a minute, 
I just changed something. Because you saw something, right? Yeah, I just saw that the hole can go to Logos and not to Autos. So uh, the Autos itself is an adjective, and I'm not sure it would could still be self if I understand. Okay. So. Right. Look okay. here. The important thing is, I don't know how it you is don't the decide to put all the possibilities. Mm. That's all. And you yeah. know what? As you go further, you'll see that will be knocked out. So at this point, no matter how much money you have, you suspect that the people you might interview are likely to say goodbye. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. Yep. Now let's go into the fourth. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rita. Well, that is interesting. Thank you, Rita. Um, since you're there. And in turn, how the others are related to the selves. Um, of course, we know what he means by others, don't we? Well. No. But go ahead. Keep going. And to any other which one may select, whether you hypothesize as the subject of your hypotheses, that which is always is, or that which is not. But you didn't read and what in did I do? and in one logos. Where did you see in one logos, or do you have that? Uh, and in one logos. I don't know. I don't see that. I don't either. see that. And one logos. It's number three. Oh, wait, we're in three. No, yes. he said four, Gina. I, yeah, I thought he said four. He didn't oh. finish three. We didn't do three. Yeah, he said four. Oh, okay. Yes, you, we did. Do you want to do three? We did it already. We're doing four. Um, um, we didn't finish. Three. Oh, you're right. We didn't finish it. Yeah, you can go back and finish it. Yeah, we didn't go ahead. finish it. Yeah, just read three again. What am I doing? Read three again. Hmm. Alrighty then. And the self same logos must also be applied to the unlike to motion and rest, to generation and dissolution. And to that, and to the self that is, and to the self that is not, and in one logos concerning that which should be hypothesis, as always being, and as not being, and anything else that undergoes any experience whatsoever. One must consider the consequences in relation to the self, and in relation to each one of the others being considered which anyone may set up for this purpose, and in relation to the many, and similarly, in relation to everything. That doesn't leave out much, does it? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, look like here. You may have had some trouble with this one. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right? Okay. Would you read the next one, please? Go ahead. And in, and in turn, how the others are related to the selves and to any other which one may select, whether you hypothesize as the subject of your hypotheses that which always is or that which is not. If you care about being perfectly exercised to thoroughly behold the truth in a masterful way. Wow. Good. Hey, what did he just say? Can you picture yourself doing it? What would you be doing if you were to do it? Come on, take a minute out.
Mm. Okay, now look here. Uh, who would you call upon to get help for this? You want to do it? No, I, oh, I realize oh. I have no idea what they're even <laughs> no, talking no. about. Then, wait a minute, then you're reading well. <laughs> You gotta see that you're reading well if you're confused. The more precision you hold on to what you're not seeing, you're reading Parmenides. The thing is, it all has to come together on some principle. But unless you see the difficulties, you're not going to appreciate what's going on or understand the meaning of what he's doing. So let's take a look at this one. All right. Notice. He makes a distinction between others and self. Therefore, there must be, there must be some things in the universe that cannot be considered selves. Right? To start with. Okay. And by the way, when you're talking about others, uh, it doesn't make any difference what other you happen to select. Because there are many others uh, we were using ice cream before. Okay, we can also use coffee cups. That's the one I'll select. Now you have to talk about it in terms of whether or not the subject of our exploration is something that is eternal or is not. Okay, now look here. You may be understanding the last part of this. Now, try to deal with, it with the first part. What must you do? Take a look at the way he's phrasing that. I'll read it. All right? And in turn, you have to see how the others are related to selves. How others are related to selves. <coughs> That means the things you thought were not self, you have to show how they're related to selves. Agree? Yeah, like fire hydrants. Fire, fire hydrants. Yes. Or, by the way, you can pick anything you want. Okay. Right? But whatever subject you talk about, you have to know whether you're talking about one that's eternal or not. All right, yeah. Yeah, no, okay. Uh, how do you do that? How would you talk about how uh, ice cream and coffee cups uh, are related to selves? How they benefit you? And no, no. See, now we're going to add stuff to it, see, yeah. to make sense of it. But it's, hey, it's bare bones, is it not? Good. Good. Would you agree there's quite a few puzzles in our one, two, three, four categories? Yeah. You have to keep them in mind. Okay, let's see what Papa Socrates does with this. Okay, come on. Socrates. Oh my God, you're talking about an extraordinary undertaking. Yeah. Hey, is it possible he understood it? What's going on here? Go ahead. Want me to read? Yeah. Yes, please. Go ahead, George. Go on. Oh, you speak of Parmenides of an extraordinary study of realities. And I do not quite understand. But why not hypothesize in detail a great self for me in order that I may be more able to understand? Good. What does he want? You want some to hypothesize a great self? No, 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 you missed your keyword. Come on, do it again. Oh, you speak of Parmenides of an extraordinary study of reality. Go ahead. And I do not quite, quite understand. But why not hypothesize in deal a great self for me? Hey, hypothesize a great Self, whatever that might be. Uh, my brother. Um, but the way he talks about it, please. My my brother's translation says, 
but why not hypothesize in detail a certain definite self for me? Yeah, Very that's specific. even better. Certain. Oh, a certain definite. Yeah, really in order that I may be definite. more able to understand. Hey, we want a definite yes, self. Yes, more right? specific. That's what we need. Yeah. Right? That's yes. what Socrates says. What does that mean? He does something. He's right. He's he wants to know about the nature of the self. Yes, certain definite. Socrates. 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 Yeah, Socrates. and definite. I mean, definite. nothing ambiguous about it, buddy. Yeah, everything's an assumption. Right. But what you have in here is definite. Right, you got it. Yeah. All right, okay. All right. Thank you for that. Okay, come on. Uh, and Socrates really did it nice. Yeah. Okay, keep going. You assigned. You assign, you assign or Socrates much work for one as old as myself. He just laid out four <laughs> subjects of amazing complexity. So, I said, hey, you know what you're asking? You're asking, your own, you're asking me to do some work. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That in that case, Zeno, why not thou unfold it in detail for us? Hey, yeah. Zeno came. We came to hear Zeno, not Parmenides. Yeah. And Zeno is supposed to be your chief assistant, bottle washer, philosopher. Spokesperson. Let him do it. Defender of the... Wait a minute, do what? Make sure you can demonstrate a definite idea of the self. Yeah. That's what Socrates wants, does he not? That's right. Yeah. Hypothesis about it. Yeah, go ahead. Then Zeno laughing said, we must ask Parmenides himself, O Socrates, for it has, as it has been said, it is indeed no trifling matter. Or do you not see how great the work is that you are assigning? Therefore, on the one hand, if more of us were present, it would be unworthy to make such a request. For it is improper, and especially for a man of his age, to speak of matters such as these in the presence of many people. For the many are ignorant that without a way through and wandering through all, it happens to be impossible for intellect to hold on to the truth. Thus on the one hand, O Parmenides, I beg, along with Socrates, that you yourself take up the Logos in order that I may also thoroughly hear that which I heard some time ago. Then Antiphon said, when Zeno asked this, Pythodorus said, and he also, and Aristotle and the others asked Parmenides, to demonstrate that which he spoke of and, and not do otherwise. Parmenides said, it is necessary to comply with your request. And yet I appeared to myself to sympathize with the fate of the horse of Ibicus, which being a racehorse and being advanced in years, when being about to contend in the chariot races and by knowing the experience trembled with fear at the forthcoming event, and to whom Ibicus, comparing himself, said, and self being so old is involuntarily compelled to return to the object of my love. And I also, being an old, as old as I am, appear to myself to exceedingly dread the present undertaking, remembering in what way it is required to swim through such and so great a sea of logos for thus it is necessary to take this task in hand, seeing that it is at the request, seeing that it is at the request of Zeno. And in any case, we are by ourselves. Therefore, from where then shall we begin? And what shall we hypothesize first? Or if you wish, seeing that it certainly appears that we must play a reality-based game, I must begin from myself and the hypothesis of myself by hypothesizing about the oneself, whether one is or whether one is not, 
What must the result be? And Gino says, by all means, who then will answer to me? Or will it be the youngest among you? For the labor will be very much less should he answer what he thinks. And his answer at the same time will afford me a time for resting from that arduous investigation. Aristotle says, I will attend thee in this, O Parmenides, for thou call upon me as calling upon the youngest. Ask me then as one who will answer thee. Huh. Go ahead. Oh, it's a spicy meatball. Parmenides, well then, if one is, what, if one is, could not the one be many in some other way? How could it be many? The first hypothesis. No, no. Oh, that poem? The Ibicus poem? You meant, come on, talk about the stuff. Huh? Sorry. I didn't even... Okay, look here, we want to pull out two things. Oh. You should know the poem, but you should also know the hypothesis of oh. Parmenides. Read it. Oh, if the one... I must begin from myself. Oh. Come on. Yeah. I must begin from myself and the hypothesis of myself by hypothesizing about the oneself whether one is or whether one is not. What must, must the result be? Thank you. This hypothesis is, the hypothesis of the one self, and the question is whether uh, the implications on the one, whether it is or is not. Look her. Right. Um, let's take a break. Look here, a couple of things. Mm. This work was probably written around 400 BC. <clears throat> now, it wasn't until we get to 270 AD, nearly 700 years, before we get another philosopher who survived, and his printing survived, and his work survived, we know the names of many of the philosophers in here, but all of their works are gone, disappeared. Right? There's a gap, therefore, a major gap of 700 years approximately. Yeah. Right? Then at 270, this is when Plotinus comes in. Yeah. Right? After Plotinus, from 270, to 529, there's a whole group of interesting philosophers that emerge. And the, the last two are Proclus and Damascus. Now, when we're reading this work, we have to discover how Parmenides thinks. Yeah. Not how we can change it so that we can understand it. We have to see why he thinks the way he thinks. Right? Once you take on that challenge, you have to be confused. If you thought you'd be confused we're looking at these four examples, it's going to be worse. Right. Now look here. But when we go into the first hypothesis, what you want to know is um, what uh, what uh, what kind of thinking. Speculation does he go through? To reach 
his conclusion. Now, to get to his conclusion, you have to see what are called arguments. That is, you have to see what, he, what his premise is, how he reasons, and how he concludes. Now, we're going to, sh in this, you will see that even the word argument is going to fall in question. Because of a lot of the so-called arguments are not going to make sense. If you see that, you're reading good. And you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right? What are you going to do? You're going to take a look at the premise that starts an argument. You're going to look and wonder whether if that's an argument, it, does it fit where it is? I mean, in other words, here we have an idea, a, a discussion. or argument. And he reaches a conclusion. This is the first hypothesis. But to reach this final conclusion, he must have sub-arguments. since his conclusion is going to contain many ideas. Each of these ideas is going to be part of the sub-arguments. Now, what if it turns out that there are Fourteen such arguments, or what we're calling arguments of discussion. Now, what if we look at each one of them? Okay, here's the idea, here's the discussion, here's the conclusion. And this repeats itself. Conclusion. Suppose as you look at these arguments, you come to the conclusion that there's something curious about them. Right? Uh, should, not, should, they, should they not fit together? Should they not be coherent, fit together one, one with another? Well, then you'll have to ask, if they fit, what, under what idea do they fit? That is to say, if they, co if they are coherently connected with one another, we would like to see that proof. Because we want to see, given this argument, why this must follow. Furthermore, we also want to take a look at these so-called arguments themselves. Is it possible that uh, they may be rational, but uh, they may not fit in this sequence? That's the first hypothesis, and you find out that, hey, you know what? 
as you look at each one of these, well, they seem at first to have some kind of rational structure, but then when you look at it closely, you'll be able to say to yourself, wait a minute, it's not as clear as it should be, therefore I should add more to it. But you would object, would you not? Ah. Oh. Then I'm going to have to say with some confusion, if there is any. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, did we find some confusion in these exercises? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. You've got your training, don't you? Yeah. We can put up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> now look. It all fits together if you discover why he reasons the way he is reasoning. Second, it would even be better if we could find some literature that would show us how a Greek thing, a philosophical Greek thinks of this argument. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if we could find one of these philosophers look at this and say, oh, well, <laughs> uh, what you need to know is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Wait a minute. If it was, look here, if these things were known to a Greek at 470, pardon me, at 500 AD, and he quotes other thinkers before him saying the same thing, then this was understood and accepted. But it's not in our text. So therefore, what's interesting is that there's two thinkers, right? Proclus, Damascus. They both are going to make sense of this. And uh, mm -hmm. this comes out of Brooklyn's, and uh, we should make copies of it and pass it around. What's the text on Demetrius? Yeah, okay. I'll, it's a, I'll pass it around. Chapter twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, look here, <clears throat> and. Um, As the first hypothesis, however, uh, it demonstrates by negations the ineffable supereminence of the first principles of things. And events is that he is exempt from all essence and knowledge. Now here's the important sentence. It is evident that the hypotheses after this, as being proximate to it, they unfold the whole order of the gods. You know, he's not going to mention in the Hypermenides anything to do with the gods. Proclus is coming along and he's saying, and here's, the, well, this will be available to you after. Um, mm. Now, each of these ideas that we mentioned in item three, by the way, just for the audio, that was, uh, that was Theology of Plato, end of book two, chapter 12, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now look, remember when we said you have to apply the logos to these ideas? Mm -hmm. Remember, quickly go back and take a look. Right, that's the third category. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. each one of these, each one of these Proclus's and his commentary on Plato's Parmenides takes each one of them and sets out what is called a dialectic. 
a dialectical exercise on each one of these ideas. So therefore, you can then see from Proclus's account that each one of these ideas hey, is really a, an exercise, a dialectical exercise, which means you have to study an idea in terms of 24 ideas or two sets of 12, one positive, one negative. And he lays that out in this work called right, Plato's Commentary, pardon me, the Commentary on Plato's Parmenides by Proclus. Right. Now look here. Oh. Hold it. Commentary on Parmenides? Yeah, Plato's Parmenides, right. Now look. Each of the gods, right, each of the gods in the Greek world can be represented as an idea. Right. Hey, a very profound idea. It's really a, a metaphysical way of understanding the gods. So therefore, the order of the gods in Greek mythology is purely rational. Right? Each of them represents a very profound metaphysical idea. Therefore, when we go through the hypotheses, especially the first, would it not be interesting if these particular arguments are really nothing other than conclusions that describe metaphysically each one of the gods or the order of the gods. Right? No. Wait, wait, so you're saying that uh, it's possible that the 14 arguments, if we can find them in the first hypothesis, though they may not make sense right away, potentially each argument is representing a different metaphysical idea, which we can call a god. I'm sorry, but you got it. <laughs> wow. Okay, now look here. A lot of questions come up with as a result of this. Why is he doing this? Why is he? Why doesn't he do it overtly? Why doesn't he point out that these arguments are really representative of what we just described? Why does he keep it in his back pocket? Maybe somebody doesn't want him to be talking about other gods. Right, because his friend. His friend uh, Socrates, for example. Right, because he introduced a new spiritual way of understanding the gods. Right. That's what this is. But you have to do your homework to see it. That's where we're going. Keep it under wraps, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tyranny always wants to control something. What do you want? That piece of paper I just had. Uh, it's over there. Oh, there it is. So, um, notice it is evident that the hypotheses after this right, must unfold the whole order of the gods. Wow. Right? And therefore, he gives a whole description of what he sees, what we just said. That all of these arguments are strange. They're very puzzling. They don't make any sense. He said, hold on, they'll make sense. Mm. Okay, have copies for this next time. Okay? Okay. Is that what Barbara sent out? Yes. Okay. Did you get a copy? I got a copy at home. You got a copy? 
We'll make co copies to all of you. You've got, you yeah. all got an email address. Make sure you have, have leave yeah. your email address with uh, Julie. Whoever's got it, everybody's. Yeah. No. All right, you guys. Okay, let's take a break, do a dream. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you. It's Saturday. It's Saturday.